Switch me on. Hey everybody, welcome to the Proton Pack is not a toy. My name is Matt. And today the Proton Pack is a toy because today in this video I'm going to be unboxing, demonstrating, and reviewing the new HasLab Hasbro Ghostbusters Plasma Series Spinglers Proton Pack. It's a mouthful, but it's finally here. And I realize that there's plenty of videos already on YouTube because people have been getting these for a couple of weeks now. But I wanted to be able to put my reviews and uh, opinions out there on my particular pack. And I thought about uh, just completely um, skipping the whole unboxing portion of it, but there's some people that subscribe to this channel that don't know much about it, and this might be the only interaction that they have with one of these packs, so I wanted to put this out there on their behalf. Now, if you've already seen lots of these review videos or unboxings, uh, maybe if you have one on, of your own, and you don't want to see that part, I understand. Uh, here somewhere, I'm going to be putting the timestamp where you can skip forward if you want to go to the demonstration or if you would like to go forward to the review uh, portion of this video. In the review, I'm going to be talking about things that I like about the pack, some things that I don't particularly like about the pack, and then um, the value what you're getting, your bang for your buck for this particular pack, and then some of the things that I'm considering changing when it comes to modifications for this pack. So if you'd like to skip forward to the review for that stuff, then I have no problem with that. And I thank you for watching the video and I'll catch up with you uh, here in a few minutes. But for those of you who want to see the unboxing, this is the ginormous box that it came in. I've got it sitting on top of the crate or the uh, rolling box. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, transport unit is what I usually call the box that I keep my regular full size uh, prop replica proton pack in. And this is bigger than that. So it's a huge box. It's the full scale proton pack. And Let's stop messing around and talking and start cutting some of this tape off. And now, there is the box itself. Now, this one is special in the way that they have it boxed. Looking for my knife. Um, they have it designed so that it looks like it would be in a box very similar to what I have here. It's kind of a trunk, storage trunk, straight out of Ghostbusters Afterlife. It even says Egon Spengler Proton Pack there on the front. And it has the Ghostbusters logo there stamped on the top or kind of stenciled on as well as on the front. It's just a cardboard box, but they made it look as fun as you could for a cardboard box. And then here on the inside, we start getting to the goodies, and I'll bring it closer so you guys can see what we have going on in here. All right, so opening the box, again, you see the stenciled logo here, and there is a small paper bag here, it's taped shut. The instructions. This is a 14 and up product, and it does take four D cell batteries, which is heavy duty. And then it just shows you some of the features that I'll get to when I do some of the demonstrations here in a moment. Now, the way the design is right here, this is supposed to mimic the scene in Ghostbusters Afterlife where Phoebe finds the ghost trap underneath the floorboards in the farmhouse. So you slide that over and find some of the goodies in here before we get to the actual proton pack. The first thing 
is this white box that says phantasmical samples, potentially sentient, handle with extreme care. And inside the box, there's a bag. And inside the bag are these plastic pieces of what's supposed to be like white marshmallow goo slime that you can hook together with these little things like this and then hook it on to your pack and make it look like your pack has this gooey slime on it. This box is designed, you might recognize the ghost trap um, stripes on here, but this is designed actually to look like the portion of the ghost trap that slides out, like when they put it in the containment unit, containment unit, and then they slide out the, the casing and it goes inside with these uh, little vents and stuff on either side. This is supposed to be that cartridge that would go into the containment unit. That's why it doesn't look like a full-size trap. So I have it open and then inside here, We find six more little bags, and it is these cute little mini puffs with burned features. Now, I bought the other ones that came out last year, and they are just plain white. So these are the just burned variations of the same. Models, they have the same heads, same body sculpts. They just have different uh, paint applications on them to make them look burned. And then there are three different heads that you can choose from. Here are the three different heads that go with these three guys. So taking off this piece of floor, sliding it over there. And in this next box, is the pack itself so let me get on this side just so i can experience the look of this pack for the first time and hasbro is a toy company and this is most definitely a toy but it's so much more than that i mean this has weight to it there's so many details that they didn't have to add to this that they did and there she is Ugh. like i said it's got some weight to it it's not as heavy as my full-size uh, fiberglass and aluminum pack but my goodness it does Put a little strain on your back just holding it out here in front of you like this. So on the back, you can see it does have straps included, but I'm going to eventually replace those with a more accurate set of straps with an Alice frame, and I'll have videos on that in the future. You can see this is how you get inside to put the batteries in, which I will do as well. And then here on the front, this is based on the... Spingler's Proton Pack in Ghostbusters Afterlife. So this is the one that Phoebe was using in Oklahoma in the movie. And that's why it's got some of the extra things that you see like this yellow loom and these little copper bits and uh, faux um, electric tape and then a little bit more damage and wear that you would see on a normal pack. But overall, it is very robust. It's got a lot of weathering details on it. And even like the hammered finish that they used here on the Cyclotron just looks really cool. So let's get to the rest of it here. There's a stand inside as well. There's one more box inside the main case here. It says Stance Spengler Nuclear Accelerator Storage Stand.
And there's more than just a stand in here. Inside here, we have one of the other perks that we got, which was uh, Egon Spengler's journal, which has some stuff that was specifically written for Ghostbusters nerds like me to drool over and look at. So I'll look at that here in the future, not on camera. And then it came with these stickers, some from Ghostbusters Afterlife and some from the first movie. And then here are some cleaner labels that you can use and put on your pack if you want your pack to look a little bit more clean and um, not so much weathered like what we see in Ghostbusters Afterlife. What the stand is these big gray pieces. So I'll get to those in a moment. One more box on this side, which I need to cut open. This is like Christmas. It's awesome. You might be thinking, Matt, you already have a proton pack. Why do you need another one? Why buy this? Um, the packs are different from movie to movie, and the Ghostbusters Afterlife one is vastly different from the first two movies, from Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. And so I wanted this one to be my... Ghostbusters Afterlife Proton Pack. I'm not going to build my own like I did my 1989 Ghostbusters 2 version. This is going to be my Afterlife Pack. So I'm not going to have to build my own. And it is good enough to fill that void and fill that role uh, in my collection. This is the hose that will connect the wand to the pack itself inside this bag we have the ion arm and i'll get to this in a moment on have some reservations about this part but it's something that we will address inside this bag is a very small orange piece that you can use on your Neutrona wand if you have one. Hopefully you do if you're going to get one of these packs. To put here on the end, kind of like a Nerf gun, how having a color on the end helps to signify that it's not an actual piece of weaponry. It's just for fun and for display. So if you were to take this to a con or something, if you have that on there, that uh, again helps to signify the Proton Pack is a toy despite what I say every time I start a video. And in the last bag, you can hear a lot of hardware, some things uh, nuts and bolts and uh, spacers and stuff, brackets. I'm not going to dump them all out, but things that you can put on the back of your pack to help connect a real life Alice frame to your proton pack. That's all that there is left in the box. So now I will put together the frame and then we'll have a closer look at the pack and I'll kind of demonstrate. There. There's the stand all nicely built. All right. This thing is a beast. So I've got it on the stand. Um, I do need to add the hose and the ion arm so I'll do that real quick so this just pops on there in this connection here and then this has a little wheel to tighten to actually just screw this right on like a water hose. So it's like your garden hose. You can just twist it right there and eventually it will tighten where it needs to be. And then let's go ahead and connect it to the 
wand. This is the neutronal wand that Hasbro put out in 2020. Right before we moved, it was one of my first videos I did on this channel was showing off this toy from Hasbro and um, kind of come full circle to now where I get to use it here. So this would normally run on three AA batteries that would connect through here. But they have designed it so that you just slide in this piece and again connect it like a water hose, just tightening it. And that should make it interact with the pack itself. So let's see how well it connects to the gun mount over here. There it goes, sits right where it should. Now, for the fun part, let's see if it will turn on as it's supposed to. Cross your fingers, the switch, just like on Afterlife is over here, underneath the ion arm, and... So I don't know if you can see the lights there. I've got blue lights. Now I have red lights. Something wasn't connected, and so I got nervous. But uh, everything's good there. This part actually comes off, so there was probably just a loose connection. And this is on its loudest setting. So you can turn it down with the crank knob. It actually does get louder than I thought. And then if we want to turn it off, you can do it that way, or with the integrated with the wand, you turn it on here first, and then it has to decide that it's connected by flipping some of the switches on here. So turn on the power switches. And then you could fire it. I hold it down long enough, I think it will overheat. So not only does it overheat the wand, it overheats the pack as well. So that is cool. So if we flip the switches back off, we'll see if it'll fire back up. Look at that. So turning the switch on here, turned the pack on. And then when you flip it off, it takes about five seconds or so to realize that it's lost power and then it'll shut down. Hopefully you can hear me talking over all that. It's quite noisy, which is good. If you want it to be loud. Um, one of the other things, when it is turned on, if you were to try to pull off the ribbon cable here, it goes into alarm and has a different sound and display on it. So that is cool. That is something that really isn't featured on any other proton packs that people have built. Um, so to have that as a standard thing on the HasLab Hasbro pack is um, pretty cool. And for that to happen, it's got these little fake socket head cap screws and you just pull them together and that loosens the ribbon cable clamp here. I'll put it back on. And it'll fire back up. Now, you might hear the vibration motor in there. Some people say it sounds like a moo. This uh, is something that you can turn off. And you can also switch the lights so that they blink in more of uh, a way that would be consistent with the first two movies, Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. And to do that, you have to get inside. I don't know if you can do it while it's running. I'm going to turn it off just for the sake of it. 
plus it's quieter. You unscrew the shock mount there, and then you can slide out the bumper straight away from the front. It's got these grooves that just slide into the sides. So these screws on the sides are just for looks. And it'll just slide off. And then the cyclotron will come open like that. And then on the inside, you can see like the pack that we saw in Ghostbusters Afterlife on the workbench table. It has the internal cyclotron parts in there, which is kind of cool. But there's these two real switches on the inside. And then if you flip these switches, one turns off the, um, the rumble motor. And then one turns the lights from Afterlife to um, 1984 mode, basically. So let's flip one switch and see which one that is. And it does make a sound. So when it realizes that you've done something. So I don't know if it'll do it with this closed or open like that. So let me put it back on there. Maybe, there we go. So with it looking like there's something inside spinning like that, this is still afterlife mode, but you might be able to tell that there's no rumble or hum to it. That's because the uh, vibration motor has been turned off. So let me turn this back off. I wonder if I pull it away, if it'll do that sound again. No, it just shuts off. Okay, I was curious on how that would work. Okay, now if I want to flip this other switch, again, it makes a sound. And then let me hold it like that. And here you can see the lights basically snap on and snap off in each of the holes in the cyclotron to be more similar to what we see in Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. It's more of a stable pack. The one in Afterlife was supposed to look like it had been uh, basically been held together with, you know, tape and whatever Egon could come across. And so it was very unstable. That's why it seemed to make more noise and uh, look different. Uh, I'll get to more of this in a minute. Turn that back off, and then we're going to put the. Actually, before I close it off, I'm going to turn these two switches back the way they were when I opened it. I like the motor, the rumble, right now at least. I might get old, I might get tired of that, but uh, I definitely want it to have the afterlife light effects. And just tighten that back up. And we're back in afterlife mode. So there's the demonstration portion. I'm going to sit next to it and hope I don't knock it off. Let's talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and kind of give it a sense of how it fits price wise in the Ghostbusters prop community. You want to call it that. What I like about it, um, again, just out of the box, there's not much you have to do to it. It's just pretty much plug and play. You can put an Alice frame on it and then go with it, or you can just use the straps that came with it and out of the box, put your wand on it and you are good to go. This is a very, um, what's the word for it? Respectable representation of a proton pack this doesn't look like it's cheap it, it wasn't cheap but it doesn't look like it's cheaply made it doesn't look like it's something that's going to just fall apart if you look at it the wrong way it looks like it's built with quality it looks like it's it's built to be played with and uh, it'll hold up and uh, obviously some of the things are like i said molded in or not like real parts, but if you wanted to take off the clippered valve and put on a real one, or if you wanted to, you know, change out any other parts that um, look to be interchangeable, then that's stuff that you can make that decision and do that. I, I'm very happy with it. I think it's a great proton pack. 
I think Hasbro did a tremendous job. I think they paid attention to a lot of the details. Getting at some of the other details, though, um, that's where I want to kind of get some of the things I don't like about it. And this isn't to be bashing it or anything. This is me just looking at it analytically as someone who has built a full-size pack and knows just kind of without thinking about it what it's supposed to look like. Um, on the ion arm, on the end cap up here, there's supposed to be a couple of socket head cap screws that screw it in here. And with this just being blank, it just looks uh, too plain, too naked. And like, that might be one of the modifications that I might figure out how to make. Um, like I said, this just pops on and it can come back off. It's not one of those snap on type things, I don't think. And so that might be something where I can find a way to hide some screw heads in there to make it look correct. Um, that's one of the modifications that I'm kind of anticipating, but I have to figure out what is going on behind it on the ion arm because there's a couple of screws here. I'm sure there's a panel or something in here that makes the switch work. Here, the red on and off switch. And I don't want to mess that up. And that's something that I want to talk about. You can't make a mistake on this and then just go to the store and buy another one. You can't drill a hole on this incorrectly and then order, an, order another one. There aren't more. Unless you're going to buy them third party at a huge markup. These, if you're going to modify them, do them very planned out and very carefully and measure three times before even thinking about cutting once. Um, there are things I do want to change to this pack, some of the things where I might drill some holes here or there, but you can't go at it willy-nilly. You have to plan it out because if you make a mistake, you're living with it. If you drill through something without paying attention to what's on the other side and you um, you know drill a hole in the battery box or mess up something with the electronics and you fry that you're not fixing it so i can't stress enough that if you're going to modify these um, pay attention to what you're doing and don't just go crazy uh, going after it so if i do drill a couple of holes here then I'm going to do it in a way where it won't um, mess up what's going on, whatever is behind here. And I'll do investigating. I'll check it out. And if there's anything that I find out where, hey, you don't need to make any modifications in this area because of this, I'll probably put that in a video just kind of as a, hey, heads up. Um, but that's one of the things I want to change. The first thing that stood out to me was the... Uh, I don't know what you would call this. The yellow loom is supposed to be very neon. This is very dingy. This looks like corn that just got shucked. And I can't help but look at it and think that. Uh, it's just that color. Um, I bought a roll online of some. You only need like a foot of it, and I can only find them at like 10 feet at a time. So I bought a roll and then I got an email the next day to say, hey, they're out of stock for three to five weeks because other people like me are out there buying this stuff. So once it comes in, that will be one of the easy modifications that I can make without having to worry about breaking something because you just slide this off and slide the right one on and maybe weather it a little bit and it'll make this really pop and look more accurate. So eye on arm. The... Again, the corn, whatever you want to call it. Um, the cyclotron lights, when it is in 1984 mode, it'll do the snap on and snap off, like I said. But instead of just having one light illuminated at a time, it has the three. This is still afterlife mode, but you can see there's three LEDs in each spot. And they'll all turn on and off at the same time. But you can very clearly see that it's three LEDs and not just the, the one light shining in each of the holes. And so uh, I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to leave it in afterlife mode, but people that wanted to have it in Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters 2 mode, 
then that would be something that they might not be thrilled about. Uh, it, like I said, it did come with the stickers if you wanted to make it more into Ghostbusters mode. But there would be a lot of things to change. I'm not sure how easy it would be to um, remove some of the very afterlife specific things to this pack, like the um, the array of copper things here, if those just pop off or not. It does look like they just pop off. Um, so I'm, I guess you could fill that hole in all these different places. I'm not sure how it comes off over here. Um, I'm not going to mess with it because I like it. But if you wanted to make it 84 version, then there, you would have to do a lot of work to get it to look that way. Uh, more than just putting stickers on it. So I don't know that that's a negative thing, but if I was buying it to be an 84 pack, then I would be a little bit bummed out at how much work I would have to do to get it to that point. I don't trust the V hook, the gun mount over here. I'm going to leave it for now, but if someone wants to design and put that out there on Etsy or something for a better, more accurate uh, gun hook connection, then I'm interested. So I'm not going to fix that on my own, but if someone comes up with a better design, and what is on there, then I'm interested. Um, I like the stand. Um, I'm okay with the ribbon cable the way it is. I'm not going to change it out for a GV1 ribbon cable, which would be more accurate to the Afterlife one. Um, some of these, um, let's see, little clippered and legris things are very black. So they just need a little bit of color. And that's something that I can just kind of go over with some model paint or rub and buff or something and uh, really get those colors looking more correct. But that's just something that takes time. And then um, we'll put the time in on that. Um, another thing that I'm going to change, aside from the Alice frame on the back. So I'm going to take off these straps. I won't do it in this video, but I'll do it pretty much probably the next video and I'll show you how to put on the uh, Alice frame. I have an accurate Ghostbusters Afterlife version frame. I have a genuine military LC1 frame and a military LC2 frame. And I'm going to go through all three of those and see how well each of them fit. Rumor is that the LC2 won't fit. If I can find a way to make it fit, then I will and I'll show you how I did it because I know a lot of you guys bought LC2 frames and were probably disappointed that you're not going to be able to use it with this pack. If I could find a way to make that incorporate together, then I'll definitely show you guys how to do that. So that's on my to-do list. And then one of the other things I don't like is on the back, you can see all the screw holes in the motherboard. So I'm thinking about just putting a layer of something over the motherboard in between the Alice frame and this plastic motherboard, um, but still having enough access to where I can get to the batteries if I need to, because I'm not going to change the way I get to the batteries. Now let's talk about value. Some people when this first became available would say, this is just a glorified um, spirit Halloween pack. I have a spirit Halloween pack sitting right over there. Um, apples and oranges on what we have here. Again, they're both toy manufacturers. They're plastic. That's about where the you know the similarities end because um, this has so much love and detail built into it, and they paid attention. They put a lot of work into it. And you can see, and not to say that they didn't on the spirit packs. Those are good for what they are. But retail for like 80 bucks for a spirit pack, and then you can make modifications and um, put 3D prints or whatever into it and put a set of straps on it and make it work. But it's not going to change the fact that it's 85% scale and it's good for Halloween. But you know, if you wanted a full size replica proton pack at a reasonable price, 
without having access to like 3D printers or something like that where you can make it on your own, then this is the best thing that has ever come down the line. Now, some people on the other hand would say, hey, if you're going to spend, this was the pack itself, let's get that out there, was $400, $399, whatever, 400 bucks. And then if you were to add the wand, if you didn't have it already, it's what, like $100, $125. So we're talking about $525. If you buy a Alice frame, they're probably looking at least $50. Bucks. Add shipping to that, you're probably running over $600 bucks if you're going to do that. Uh, if you don't even count the Alice frame, then, you know, maybe topping out at $600. And people would say, if you're going to spend that much, then you should go ahead and just build like a full-size proton pack, like a real replica proton pack, like the one I have on that side over there. Well, to be honest, that took me years of collecting parts for and changing and modifying. I had to drill my own holes in a lot of places and buying kits and different things that I bashed together from different sellers, upgrading parts here and there over years. And over time, it costs probably $2,000 to get to the point where it is now. I didn't write a check at any point and say, hey, I'm buying a proton pack. Here's $2,000. It was something that took time to get to that point. But for instance, let me show you how good of a deal $400 to $500 is for this. Let's even call it $600. Let's just go there. This is a Max Factory frame, the idealized version. And you can see it's basically the same size. Should be. They're 1 1 scale. And so this is my next proton pack that I'm building. This is my Spingler 1984 proton pack that I'm waiting for parts from Max Factory to be able to build. Right now, I've got a few parts on here, but the parts that I got from Max Factory were the shell, the bumper, and the ion arm knob, or the shock mount, whatever you want to call it here in the front. Those three parts cost more than this. If you buy this now, it's like $4.95. This is $70, and this is $70. So for the price of this whole pack, I could buy three parts for a full-size, real-deal kind of a build. Obviously, there's a lot of parts still to add to this, but this comes with electronics that are specific to it, sound effects that my pack that I have over there doesn't have. Um, and then again, it's got a lot of different... I mean, it's got the part where you can open up the cyclotron. There's no way I would be able to do that on any of my packs that I've built. Uh, or plan to build going forward. So it's got so much going for it. And at the price that you pay for it, you're getting plenty of value. And I think that $400 for the pack itself is a steal. And if you consider all the things that were thrown in with it, the mini puffs, you've got the little notebook, you've got the plastic parts that you can put on here. Um, the stand itself, even just the stand, like even a guitar stand is minimum 10 bucks. If you wanted to put a guitar stand on your pack, there you go. There's some marshmallow on there. Make a little Santa Claus beard. But the, uh, the all the stuff that comes with it is worth, worth at least 50 bucks. So if you knock the price down to 350 for the Pack, it's the whole pack basically, not counting the wand. But 10, 12 years ago, I paid $350 for just the shell on that one over there. And that's before inflation and all this stuff now. And so if you bought it all, you have it. You don't have to add anything to it. You can if you want to on certain things, but you've paid shipping on it and that's done. You don't have to buy things from different shops and pay shipping from different places. It's a good deal. That's what I'm getting to. Makes good financial sense. It's good advice. So be happy with what you paid. If you paid the 400 that it cost from um, from Hasbro, 
um, they didn't rip you off you got a good deal and if you're one of those people that's going to buy one of these third party or from eBay or something you're not going to be able to ever get it for that $400 unless it's broken or missing things so don't have any regrets for paying what you paid to get it if this is the first and only pack that you've ever had and this is the only one you're ever going to have you can be very proud of it it's a good pack and uh, I'm happy to have it as part of my collection and put it next to my full-size replica of the Ghostbusters 2 Binkman Hero Pack. And it, you know, side by side, let's put them together and just see. So they're together. You can see you're getting a good deal. It's a good representation of a pro time pack. Again, I'm happy to have this as part of my collection. I will be making some changes. I will be doing some modifications and I will be putting those videos here on YouTube in the coming days and weeks. Uh, I am still working on the 3D printed ghost trap, but um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to work that in amongst the HasLab videos. I'm in, I'm out of breath. So, uh, I'm not out here trying to compete with anybody else that is doing modifications to these. I know Adam Savage did some awesome things. I know Jason on Ghostbusters News is going to show some of the things that he's going to do to change this pack. And that's cool. Learn and see from other people on what they want to do. Get ideas and uh, figure out what you might want to do to modify or upgrade your pack. Or just leave it as is and you can be happy with it. That's all I want to really share with this one. I will have more videos coming in the near future, and I've talked to you enough today. Thank you guys so much for watching. There's been a lot to put into this, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, sorry I couldn't have been one of the first to reveal the pack, but I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this video. And I know a lot of you guys were waiting for mine to come out, and uh, that means a lot to me that you respect my opinion enough to uh, tell me that. And I uh, hope that this video gave you what you wanted to hear. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.